according to this, we are live. Hello, everyone. We are live. We are live. I, I know. Gotcha. We're live. Oh. <laughs> I was like, according to this, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome to I'd Back That Kickstarter with Glory Hound. Dr. Glory Hog. And? Stitch. Because to replace Greg. Yeah, Greg isn't here today, guys. So and I think he's going to probably do a bang-up job. You think so? You think he's going to do a better they job than Greg? They look similar. Yeah. And I feel like, just overall, I would actually value these opinions more. He is more cuddly. I mean, look I at him. I don't know. I've him. never really Aww, tried to cuddle on Greg. Oh, so cute. So cute. I'm sure Greg is pr <laughs> plenty cuddly. Do you have the names of the people that we're giving tickets away to today? No. I sent you that information. Oh, my God. Why I are had people not prepared here? I thought you were going to announce the people. We didn't discuss this beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> I can get it. So, though. guys, today we're going to be giving away Arizona Renaissance Festival tickets. So, if you are in Arizona, we are giving these tickets away. Make sure to stay tuned. We don't have a Stitch Voice. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> Lake Leafy. <laughs> And I thought about that after the fact. I was like, man, this would be really a good time to know how to do the Stitch Voice, but right. I don't. I do have the names of the oh, winners. Oh, you do have the names? Okay, who are the winners that we gave out our family four packs to? And then we're going to do another giveaway after this where we're going to give out five more family four packs. It's up to so you. So today, who's who won? We've got Mike Van Dusen. All right. Felicia Anderson. Chris Guide. Chris Taylor. Two Chrises? Two Chris's. I don't know if you can do that. And a Daryl Lynn. <laughs> Daryl Lynn. Oh, Stitch should have had a headset. <gasps> Everybody's more creative than we are, so guys. I was <laughs> going to put the headset on Stitch. I thought about this, but Greg's head is so large that I felt like it wouldn't fit on this, even it's with just the gonna ears. It's just going to slip off. It would just fall off. It's just yeah, going to slip off, yeah. So All right. It's, it's let's get started on oh, Kickstarter today. Family. That's not a good Stitch oh. voice, but you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> First up, we have Copenhagen. This is by Queen Games. It's for two to four players. It's going to last about 20 to 40 minutes. And the starting price for this game is $40. Not this bad. is a, what is it? Polydomino. Yeah, polyomino. 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 You, you can pronounce that one. Polyomino. Yeah. <laughs> I, I always think of it as a, I always like to think of it as like, it's a Tetris game. A Tetris game. It's got a Tetris That's the pieces. short for it. It's a Tetris game. Because that's how I was introduced to that style of game. Is it That's how like everybody Tetris. was introduced to that style of game. I, there's not everybody? another game. I can't think of another All game. All people. All people. You know what? Do you want this to be a solo show? Is that what you want today? I could go back to lunch. <laughs> So this game here, you're going to be building buildings and with the little polyominoes, and you're going to be choosing cards, and you're going to be collecting those cards in your hand and then playing them in order to build the buildings. The windows are going to give you certain, not benefits really, they're going to give you like different points and stuff mm -hmm. as well as like the colors on this. And then I believe all of those little green areas on there as well are going to give you special benefits as well. What was your first, impre first impressions of this game? This really looks like a game that you would like. This is really a game that I would like. <laughs> I think so. So for whatever reason, I can play Tetris and enjoy it. I can play like Dr. Mario. I can play other. But like when I get to the point of trying to do it with a board game, I have like a really hard time like just just figuring out what the heck I want to do. See, Leif, uh, Lake Leafly, he's like, yeah, or she, he or she is like Tetris 99. What's up? I'm telling you, like. I haven't actually played Tetris 99. Tetris 99 came out, I think, this last year, and it was hot. Everybody was playing it. I think it's a free download, I thought. I don't know. I'm going to have to go I look. Know. I've been playing Dr. Mario, so I've not been playing Tetris 99. Yeah, we got Dr. Mario for the regular Nintendo. But here's the thing with Queen's games. So with Queen's games, they're harder, yeah, they're harder to find. So I feel like if you really like this game, you're definitely going to have to back it right away because... Oh, and we didn't even talk about the three millimeter thick tiles. Oh yeah, three millimeter tiles. I don't thick know tiles. how thick that is <laughs> as a guy. Like, is that like <laughs> this? This? I don't really. I never really thought you about. Get in there with the camera. It's, it's like this, this much, or like this much. Like I it's don't know. Somewhere in somewhere there. Somewhere in there. I have no well, idea. They also have. The deluxe version of this, which I think are going to come with like transparent plastic pieces as well, or something. That would be cool. Yeah, I thought the portion of this that was like the deluxe portion was really nice. I like the mats. I mean, and it looks good for this type of game. Typically, they don't have a lot of theme with them, you know, when you usually look at these types. Yeah, but I like the building of the buildings, you know. Yeah, so, okay. It is a free download. 
Gamerly says it, yeah, that Tetris 99 is a free download, guys. It's part of Switch Online. I thought it was a free one. Like, I'm going to have to get, I'm going to have to get that. There are major differences in the gameplay between the retail and the Kickstarter edition. There are. I didn't notice that portion of it. Damn, I'm so thick. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Thanks. Thanks so much, Ben. You 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 got it. Yeah. So, would you go with the thick? Would you go for the thick cardboard or the plastic? Well, you know how I feel about the mm -hmm, mm -hmm. deluxe editions, the deluxe Kickstarter editions. I feel like yeah, you love them. I know. I feel like if you're gonna be backing things on Kickstarter, that's what you need to be doing. Otherwise, like, why are you backing things on Kickstarter? Because you're just getting what like everybody else would get. Does that make sense? Wow, elitist. It's not elitist. I'm just saying, like, Yikes. if you're going to be spending the money on Kickstarter, like, why wouldn't you go for the deluxe box on that, you know? Like, but they are going to have, Probably like, the little plastic more, pieces I would on imagine it. Generally yeah, what but say. you're getting, like, a special... You're getting a special portion of the game, you know, that most people aren't going to get. Like, you would just be able to walk into any game your, store. Right, when you get out of your limo... You can show everybody Whatever. your fancy plastic tiles. <laughs> Whatever. Throw, drop them like they're hot. Just toss them out. Tiles yeah. for everybody. You get a tile. Well, it looks like the, what is it? The special one, the collector's edition and the deluxe style. box were close, but snap still. Snap the tiles, throw them out when I'm done because that's how much I don't care about money. Yeah. See, Ellen, Ellen agrees with me, guys. Ellen agrees. Yeah. If, if you're going to be sense. backing on Kickstarter... Going with the Kickstarter Deluxe Edition or the Kickstarter Special Exclusive one is the way to go. Otherwise, you're just waiting to walk into a game store and buy the game. Like, why wouldn't you just wait to do that? Like, that makes... Because I support creators on Kickstarter so they can fund their dreams. You're so close to just being axed today. Axed today, sir. <laughs> <laughs> You've already lost one co-host. Do you really want to lose another? <laughs> Well, Stitch is making improvements to the show right now with cuteness. <laughs> I don't think Stitch is cuter than me. I am oh. Yeah, I, I am like 100% down with this game, guys. But do you want the deluxe or the regular? or I want the deluxe one. Like, mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. not as enchanted by the collector's edition because I feel like I get could get the deluxe. I can get all the tiles that I want that are the plastic tiles. I mean, three millimeter thick cardboard is nice. But plastic tiles, those make clanky noises, and I like clanky noises. <laughs> oh, I remember. Uh, Alan and I were talking about this earlier. There's, like, mission cards, I think, with the Kickstarter version versus the retail. I don't oh, believe okay. the retail has, like, the mission cards. Yeah, the mission tiles. Where you have to have the special deluxe portions of it in order to do it, right? Well, it just won't be in the retail at it's all, It's just going to be the, yeah. Yeah, I think that's what we came up thing. with, is that it was not in the actual retail version, but that, I mean, that adds a lot of different well, gameplay. the majority of Kickstarters end up doing that, though. If you're backing on Kickstarter, they're going to give you something different. Where is the stuffed burrito when you need it? <laughs> so far, she hasn't backed it. I'm safe so far. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I totally forgot about that, Robert. I need to do that. <laughs> I wish she'd throw a real burrito at me. It's my lunchtime. Oh, then you could eat it, right? Yeah. I'd eat it live. I don't know. I think... <sighs> Oh, it looks okay. It looks like you can also buy the acrylic tiles as well, separate maybe with a an fifteen dollar add on on that. So know. with the little window tiles and stuff like that, you can see through them. Oh my god, that's so adorable, guys! Oh, it's so cute. Calm down. <laughs> it's literally transparency. <laughs> wow, this transparency is so clear. You don't get transparency with cardboard, though. Come on. Come on now. I don't play board games and look I can see them. that you're just like I so my, disenchanted by this. I want my board games this. to be like our, my, our window outside. I want to be able to see outside. I don't want to be able to look. Come on now. And, of course, you can go ahead and purchase some other things by Queen Games because, like I said, Queen Games are hard to find. You can't just walk into any store and usually get them. There's some that you can, but, yeah, there's a lot that are harder to find. Yeah, definitely. Well, there was a one Queen's game that we were looking for the other day, and I was like, this is just not going to happen. So... That always is nice whenever you have add-ons like that at the end. Okay. Dr. Glory Hogg, who's definitely severely disenchanted by this whole Kickstarter and building buildings. He does not want to be an engineer when he grows up. Would you back this game? No. No. I, it's nothing personal <laughs> against the game. I just typically don't like these style of games. I mean, the closest games we have to this would probably be like Baron Park and like Patchwork, which I'll play. I but, really like Patchwork. But I'm never like... 
ne it's never a game I would suggest to play with my friends. I'm never like, oh man, I can't wait you guys come over and play Patchwork. I'm just like, oh cool, we can play Patchwork. That's that's fine. Really, I play Patchwork like on my phone. I know you do. I, li I love playing Patchwork. I love the fact that you're making those little, you're trying to make everything fit. It's very much a spatial awareness game, and I'm very down for spatial awareness I games. I guess I did enough camping for, like, camping and stuff that I don't feel like the need to do this. Have you seen the garage? It's got so much stuff in there, like, it would put this game to shame. <laughs> There's no way this game can compete with the level of packing skill I have in our single-car garage. That thing is packed. So There's kayaks in there, bikes. It's yeah, crazy. They do make Luxor, no but, yeah, it's not an add-on for this campaign, which it's sad that it's not because that was – I think that might have been the one that we were looking to pick up or something. I don't remember. There's I so many know. now. Yeah, it's like Dr. Nick's Diet from The Simpsons. What does if that mean? If you can mean? see through it, you can buy it. Oh, God. I think he did that with donuts. He's like, if you can see through it, it's healthy. And you're like, oh, hold the on. The other donuts. portion of this game that I really like is that when you're picking cards, you do have to pick cards next to each other. So, like, if you want one card, you're going to have to – pick up another card next to it on that. And that makes the game a little bit more challenging and stuff in this. And I don't know. I just feel like it's going to be a super challenging game. I'm super excited about it. Yeah, and I'm going to back You this. do like games that are just super challenging for the aspect of being super challenging. I like a game that's <laughs> theme first, and then if it's a challenging game inside of it, that's awesome. That's amazing. But, like, I want to feel like I'm doing something fun. I don't feel like building sides of buildings is fun. Like, I have Legos if I want to do that. Speaking of Legos, I got to go. <laughs> All right. I'm going to back this game. I think it looks amazing. I love the fact that you have plastic tiles on it. I like the options that you have to choose items in this and that you are trying to hold those cards back as well as trying to then place them on the board in a manner that's going to go ahead and give you a – where you're trying to get a bunch of different things. It's not just like how fast can we build this up really high. It's the fact that – Am I trying to group windows together? Am I trying to group colors together? Am I trying to... Robert's really helping me out here. ...make everything fit cr in the correct way? He's like, like linking where you can get plush burritos to throw. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the aspect of the draft, though. Alan's right. That does that part sounds cool. I like drafting in general. I, you know who would be in for this game? Greg. I yeah. can see Greg getting this game. This is 100% up his alley. He has a bunch of... I wouldn't say a bunch, but he's got a lot of games. He loves polyominoes in general. So I could see him being all over this game. All right. Well, I'd He'd probably that. have to try it before he bought it. He probably know. would have to try, have to try it before he'd he'd he would He'd have to try it. it before he could buy yeah, it, Yeah, that's exactly it. He'd have to try it. And Dr. Glory Hog, you're a no. Yeah, I'm just a no on this one. Uh, but, I mean, I'll play it. I'm just – it's not something that I would be, like, excited to back. All right. All right, moving on. We have Shadows of Killforth. Now, this is – it was originally a – different game so yeah, this touch is touch of death i think touch yeah of, this yeah. is hall or nothing productions it's for one to four players it's going to last about 45 to 180 minutes this is an rpg style game where mm -hmm. you're going to be playing through different scenarios and stuff and it actually has a modular board system where but the modular board system is not like an actual board itself it's actually cards which is kind of nice right. because Cards are a lot, actually a lot easier to store, you know? And who else has done this lately? We just saw it. Um, Tainted Grail did that, right? Didn't they have a card system for their yeah. board? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I think is really interesting because you can have a lot more board with just cards. If you're playing in an RPG-style game, like, how important is it for you to have, like, a hexagram board or, like, going through all these different so things. So, uh, like normally I would say I'd rather have the board, but the problem with the board is it's really easy to predict things. Like, you can be like, oh, well, this is clearly there's a door over here. Or, oh, there's this over there. Like, with Gloomhaven, you know where the doors are at. You can see them on the board. Right. But with cards, if, you f if you're flipping stuff or if you're laying it out, I feel like there's a little bit more variability there. And, yeah, you've got to use your imagination to consider, like, all one area. All but connected, yeah. But... There's also just more variability whenever you've got cards versus a static board that they can only do so much with. Like my Mystics, every time you play that, you kind of know where stuff's coming from, where the spawns are going to be at. Like, and you can set yourself up tactically for that, which is fine. I'm not against that, but I kind of like the idea of, of a little bit more randomness to it because that's how real fights are. They're, I mean, they're random. You don't know what's going to happen. Like all of a sudden, trash can hits you over the head, and you're like, where did that guy come from? I like that a lot too, and – comparatively like something between Gloomhaven where you have a little bit of story going on yeah and you're getting those big sets of tiles and everything I mean visiting cards and places that have art on them and everything that's kind of like 
more RPG style anyway, because with RPGs, you're basing everything more on the story. Wait, I don't, would I have to use my imagination? You I'm, would have I'm to out. use your imagination. I'm out, guys. <laughs> Not backing it, no. <laughs> well. I do like the art on this, though. Uh, which is interesting is, is that the art like is still like, it's very nicely done, and it's done kind of medieval fantasy without it being like overly ridiculous, like like sexist either. Like I didn't see any art that would be like super offensive to people. It just looked kind of dark and gloomy more than anything else. Oh, that's was very cool. true. That's a really good point that you brought up. Well, yeah. thank you. <laughs> but I just thought it looked cool. I like the art actually looks really good on this. Sometimes the art can be make or break for these types of games. Like if you don't like the art, you don't like the art. Like one of the reasons we backed acrophobia, I think it's called. Yeah. Is because it was so dark and it looks like you're going through a really crappy world and we just wanted to do that. We for just some wanted reason. to visit crappy worlds for I fun don't, I don't because know why. You know, entertainment, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I don't really know either. Maybe we should see a shrink. Yeah, no, I think the location cards are really, really cool. And also Seventh Continent kind of did that too, where they had cards acting as the map in that. And although that one was a little bit more, okay, this is an actual map and you have things on it and everything, um, I really enjoy the card aspect of this, guys, because I think that there's so much more versatility. And I do like what Dr. Glory Hog said, where you can get, Cards that you don't know that are coming out, coming out where you can do a, or more of a randomization with things and everything. I really like that paired with RPGs. And if that puts the cost down some and it makes it so people spend more time on the story and the art and other things, like that's exactly what you want in an RPG style game. So Agreed. I think that's fantastic. I agree with my own points. You agree with your own points? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 100% <laughs> agree. This game looks amazing. I have not played the original though. I didn't play the original. Well, so if I'm understanding correctly, the original hasn't actually been sent out yet. I oh. Fe I feel like the it's if I'm well understanding it correctly, thing. and I might be wrong, that it was called like a touch of death. It hasn't been sent out yet, and they're like, hey, if you order that, you're still going to get your copy. We've just renamed it to Shadows of Killforth, and you can add the upgrades and the changes to it. But this is like a whole second well, wave, Well, that like if makes you will. me semi-suspicious, though, because if people haven't received their original game on this, like... Well, it just might be... I think they went through an issue where they had to change the name a little bit or something. So it sounds like they've done another Kickstarter that they already went through. I think they already did Gloom of Killforth. Yeah. Like if you go to the bottom, all the videos and stuff are actually really reviews about Gloom of Killforth, not Shadows of Killforth. But they're like, it's the same setting. It's the same style of game, but just obviously mm -hmm. different cards and stuff. Well, I think in the industry, there's been a lot of people that have, especially there was that one campaign that, didn't it just happen where, like, the guy ran off with money or something? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. So I think people are a little wary right now. So that, like, after that. having that portion and then, like, hearing this other portion, I am a little wary on that. Like, would I back this knowing that? I don't know. I guess it depends if you've already backed the, you know, touch backed of... Backed the original? Yeah, the touch of death and stuff. And, and oh, how they have delivered, he says. Okay. Well, I know they delivered Gloom of Killforth, but there was the touch of death one that I don't think that one got delivered yet. But maybe they did. I don't know. Well, this is a good You'd note, to, guys. So It depends on if you've... I mean, if you obviously were in on that campaign, you would know more about this. But this seems like this is kind of like the third iteration of this style of game for them. They also did Tears for a Thousand Mothers. Okay, so here's the thing, guys. Whenever you are looking at Kickstarters, this is what you need to do. First off, if it's a first-time publisher, you haven't heard of the publisher before, and I usually always do this before I actually hit the back button, is I go to the person's name right here where it says Buy Tristan Hall, and you can click on this, and it's kind of going to give you like an overview oh, of everything five created. here. What's it say? Five created? Yeah, and you can go to the created portion here and see exactly what they've created, and then it's going to tell you what they've created, how much it made, how much it was funded, how many days it was left, it's left to go if it's current right now. And here's the really important part, guys. You can see all of the information and updates and everything on these old Kickstarters, okay? So if you're like, all right, well, I wonder how well they did customer service in this. You mm -hmm. can go to that and check out the updates and see what's happening in these games, okay? And I always, always, always recommend you do that before you back a Kickstarter. If you're unsure, you've never heard of the company before, you know, if you're looking not to lose your money, like we've been very lucky. I've done lots of research on all of the things that I've backed 
and we've been lucky to like never have lost like any no, money. The closest on we've something. gotten is just somebody something being late, but yeah, like I mean, we've gotten something months. where it's been like really late. No, we had uh, Quad Heroes, which is like I don't oh, know, maybe a year and a half or two years late or something. That is but the one that's still kind of out there. It is coming back, but and I've seen pictures of it. At least. Yeah, and I would have been more upset if they weren't so involved in everything in the community and I was always seeing them posting things and stuff and I think it's really important for you guys to know hey make sure that you're actually looking at every portion of this Kickstarter as not you know not just like being drawn in by ah oh, it looks amazing has beautiful art like it's crazy backed right now like there's a ton of people backing it you got to do your research too because you don't want to get duped on stuff okay so <laughs> <laughs> he, so Magenta Lizard says, I backed Lifeform and it hasn't delivered yet. So with this particular game here, I'm going to say be that... Be wary. Maybe. Yeah, be wary. If you're really, really interested in the game and y you do your research and everything, you feel comfortable backing it, go ahead and back it. I personally am not going to back it for many reasons, just because, one, we have so many big box games right now to play. I actually don't have time for this game. And although it looks like an amazing game... Like, it just didn't, like, fully appeal to me as a person. Like, I don't think I'm just ready for, like, a big RPG game right now. Like, this just didn't hit home well, for me. So, one, I would say Greg is probably not backing this one because I've never – I don't see any games like this in He'd his collection. He'd like to try before he buys. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if Greg – because Greg is not super into RPG, so I don't think these hybrid games are really in his wheelhouse. Yeah. He, was, he started off as a, a, a heavy Euro gamer and barely got into, like – I mean, not barely, but then got into Ameritrash and everything else. So I don't think this is really in his wheelhouse. For me, the only reason why I wouldn't back this, because I'm not as worried about that. I mean, I mean, we we're not exceptionally rich, but generally when I go into Kickstarter, I know there's some expectation that it could fail for whatever reason. But the only reason why I wouldn't back this one is just simply because we have two box sets of like Pathfinder that we haven't gone through. We've got Acrophobia that we haven't gone through. We've got Arkham Horror that we haven't gone through, Right. the card game. Um, and there's a lot of expansions to that. So I feel like I have games that are similar kind of RPG card hybrids that we just haven't played all the way through yet. And so I wouldn't want to get another one until we've done those ones. Right. But this is something I could see picking up at a later time because I thought the art looked pretty sweet yeah. and some of the different classes and everything seemed interesting. Well, and thanks so much for your comments too, guys, because I love the fact that we do a show like this. And then you guys can also comment because if there is something that comes up and you guys can always bring that to our attention and be like, oh, hey, you know what? I haven't gotten this from it or this company has done this or you know what this company does outstanding jobs with customer service or whatever it is. You it does help because we can't literally back everything that's right on and ourselves. we can't know like everything in the community. It's more you like a, a conglomeration of people all giving opinions with all of this. So <laughs> I hate to tell you how many games I haven't gotten oh, through. No. Okay. You know what? Gamer Leaf, Le Leaf like that happens to everybody. There's very few people that I know that don't have a shelf of shame, okay? So don't feel bad about it. Everybody has a shelf of shame. And if they say they don't, be suspicious. Be very, very suspicious, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but it has gotten to the point now where I'm like, all right, I'm really backing off the heavier games that are just time sinks because I just don't have that time. And I, you know, that's why I've kind of leaned a little bit more towards the Ameritrash games that are like an hour or less, which I was already leaning towards because I know that I'll get to play them more than once. All right, Dr. Glory Hog. Next up, we have How Do You Pronounce Things? Oh, crap. <laughs> so we're going to do a quick little intermission here, guys. If there's any cussing, it's and not we're going to see, fault. we're going to see how Dr. Glory Hog can pronounce the following games, okay? This is going to be exciting. Are I'm you ready? Excited. I'm not going to say them, so you get the full pronunciation Why don't from Doctor Glory them to Hog, me and then I can just read them off. All right. You guys can guess. Here's if I got the first it right. one. Where's it at? It's right here. Oh, Casserone. What is it? Casserone. You mean Carcassone? Casserone, like like casserole. Like a casserole. <laughs> I'm sorry, Stitch. You don't need to hear this. What What about this one? Scythe. Oh, you got that one right. Yeah. I think I've said that one enough <laughs> times by now. What did I used to call it? Like Sith? No, not like Sith. Scythe or something? Scythe or something? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who knows? Scythe. One All right, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Papillon? What is it? Papillon. What? It's Papillon, clearly. Like the dog? I don't know what the dog's <laughs> called. Papillon. You mean Papillon? Sure. It's a Papillon. I can spell it correctly. Does that count? <laughs> 
This is this is making me this is turning me out in a bad light here. <laughs> I have other skills. <gasps> what about this one? <laughs> Agricolia. What is it? Agricolia. Why are you you <laughs> making me say it? It's Agricolia. It's Agricola. Nah. It's Agricola. <laughs> nah. <laughs> It's like you wow. choose not to say it right. Okay, and here's your last one. Santorini. There you go. Did I get that one right? Yes. Nice. I got actually made fun of at work because I was calling um, tapatio. I was calling tapito, and they were like, what the heck is tapito? And I'm like, you know, like the hot sauce. And they were like, what? And I was like, the hot sauce, you know, like tapito. And they were like, you mean tapatio? We'll make sure that you guys stay tuned for any other things that Dr. Glory Hogg can't pronounce There's because a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it used to be worse though, whenever we were, uh, podcasting. Cause like all they can hear is your voice and they're like, that guy doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> oh. Poor Dr. Glory Hogg. I have Hogg. no regrets. Listen, Poor Dr. I can't Glory do Hogg. <laughs> and I can't, can't pronounce all the names right. <laughs> Wow. I'm a gentle lizard. <laughs> I've never heard such bad pronunciation before. <laughs> well, obviously you don't know. There, it could be worse. You should see me pronounce the words I learned in Iraq, which is oh Iraq, apparently. Oh, my goodness. I don't know. All right. So next up, we have Glenmore Chronicles. You should hear me try to learn German. It's pretty oh, rough. Oh, that's true. We'll do, we'll do German words next, Ugh. okay? No, oh, thanks. Glenmore Chronicles. This is for two to four players. It's going to last about 90 to 120 minutes. The base cost for this game is about $67. <laughs> ben enjoyed all of your <laughs> pronunciations. I thought I would have done a little bit better on that one. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was surprised you didn't put Tidika Wackling on there. Oh, uh, yeah. No, that one I still have to. Yeah, because you can't to, say I that one either. Tio Nobody Tau can. Or I don't Nobody know. Nobody can. Yeah. That one I'm going to have to really get it. Get it going. Yeah, we hope to eventually bring the podcast back and stuff. We're going to try downloading uh, what we do normally and then put it out there. Okay, and Alan says, Glenmore 2 is so pretty. I want it, but do I back it or wait for it in retail? That's a really good question because I believe with this one, you're not, like, getting anything special with this one. It's just I think the you game, get, like, right? one extra chronicle. One extra chronicle? Yeah, you I have to figure out if that's worth it, the one extra chronicle for it. This one here, though, it is a tile laying game, and whenever you put down your meeple, you're going to activate the items around it. I really like the fact that they were they started out with an idea for this game, going, "Hey, we're going to make another Glenmore," and then as they started evolving the rule set and making it a better game, they're like, "Oh man, like this has gone such a far way from the original. We're going to make this into a completely separate game." So I really liked that portion of it. Magenta Lizard is asking if Spanish should be more useful in Arizona. I um, took Spanish in high school <laughs> and um, Hannah I'm Hannah pretty Mikoji. good at it. I'm kind of good at it. Yeah, it's not no, true. no, he's not very I'm good. I'm not good with languages. I don't have an ear for it. I like literally can't hear the differences in pronunciations between a lot of different words. So I just kind of give up. Oh, here we go. Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan is what I would read that as. Teotihuacan? Maybe it was Te maybe. Yeah, Teotihuacan. Like, Khan! Khan! <laughs> That's how I read that. Teotihuacan! I think that's, yeah. All right, so what are your first impressions of this game, Dr. Glory So Hogg? I've never played the original, and I, I know it's highly rated, so almost off that alone makes me want to back it based off how highly rated it is. And it's kind of a theme I like. You know, I generally like, you know, Irish, like Scottish. Scotch. Scotsman. Yeah, like those types of things. I'm like, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I watched Highlander. I'm not going to brag. I watched I like the movies in the show. You're getting the barley for like. For whiskey and yeah, stuff. Yeah, for whiskey. <laughs> it's like, yeah. nope, we don't need to feed the people. It's just the whiskey. Okay? So it seems interesting. I just think for me, I'm going to actually pull a Greg and say I'd have to play it before I buy it just because I just really don't know. I've never played this game. You've never and played the original portion. I've played games that kind of have yeah. like that Rondale style where like if you're last, you get to go first. Uh, quite recently, we played Smartphone. And if you were, like, last in points, you got to actually be the first one to do some of your actions. Yeah. And so I did like that because it kind of does give you that catch-up mechanic a little bit, like, continuously, but not so drastic. You're like, this is clearly a catch-up mechanic. Um, so I've never done that. I like some of the aspects where, like, you can either get a bunch of cards now and then go farther down in the turn order or wait and get a whole bunch, like, later at a later time. So I, I like that aspect of it. I've just never played it. So it's hard for me to say this is a definite back. But if you played the original, you're going to know if you like this or not. So – 
the you're actually you're getting and now it looks like nine different chronicles. So is that nine different expansions on this? Yeah, essentially, I think they add. It's kind. It sounds like it's a little bit like Charter Stone, where it kind of adds like a little bit of a different like mechanic tweaking, like yeah. as you go along with the different chronicles, and you get a story. It's got William Wallace in it. I mean, that's almost right. That's true. It's got I was some just big names so close to be it, like yeah. freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thanks so much, Gamer Leaf. Much, I much prefer this to Dice hey, we, Tower we can Live. Well, you know. We can actually <laughs> act it out. Ready? So this is William Wallace, and then it just says, <laughs> Frida! Oh, poor Stitch. You're so sweet. So, like, I'm sorry, I buddy. think that, like, since you're getting so much stuff here, I don't know, but, like, you you should be able to get this on the game shelves, though, right? Like, I'm really torn by this game, guys. So because you you haven't played this one either. Correct? I haven't played this one either. It looks really Just really good. I love the fact that, like I said, they went back and they were like, "Hey, we're gonna make this game better than before." I always think that when a company notices that their game well, like has like some issues in it, and like stuff Euphoria like that, and that was they like, well, "Hey, it's been ten that. years. Let's yeah. let's update this with some of the newer stuff that people are used to and like, and that really." I always out. think that's excellent because like why wouldn't you take those classics or those games that people loved and then update them to give the community the same game with that same feeling to it but also fix things makes thing make things more challenging like why Jason. wouldn't you do that like i don't know no i think it's a good <laughs> idea jason I says lucky all these are passes for me this time <laughs> <laughs> it was a little bit lighter week jason it was this was more of like a heavier I don't know, RPG Euro, like, I don't know. The show runs anywhere from, like, 30 minutes to an hour. Yeah, We only got one more to cover, matters. so yeah, not we only too got, long. Yeah, we only got about. Without Greg here, it goes a lot faster. For real. Uh, Greg takes so long. No. <laughs> but I feel you. I'm on my lunch break, too. I got to extend my lunch break just for this show. All right, Dr. Glory Hog. Would you back this game? No. This one is a Greg. I'd have to play it before I buy it on this one. Okay. I think I think Greg would buy this though. I think so. I bet too. you Greg's probably played Glenmore. Probably. And if he would have been like amazing, he could have told us that and then yeah. gave us his impression, but he didn't. Instead he's in California. Going to a wedding. <sighs> That's not more important than us. Do you think he's actually gonna play any Come games on. the whole time he's there? I don't know. <laughs> probably. If, if I, was, I wouldn't <laughs> even go to a wedding if there weren't going to be some type of games anymore. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> sorry, no. I've seen people get married. Only gamer weddings? <laughs> yeah. I've seen people get married. I'm over it. Yeah, you know what, Copenhagen, I'm down with Copenhagen, Magenta. So with this one here, I'm going to have to say I'm going to either wait to play the original or I don't know, I, I'm i still undecided about this one, guys. So I defense. really like the fact that you're getting so much game here. I like the theme. I really like the mechanics of this and everything. I like that they improved off of the base game. There's so much that I like about this game. It's just like a lot of game that I don't know how to play yet. So, you know, like word. I I want more I want more in-depth like being in the game to make my final decision. Maybe we can get I'm going to have to find somebody that has a copy of this. I'm going to find somebody that has a copy of this and then I'll update you guys later. <laughs> Personally. And we'll play Personal something. Text messages to everyone. We'll, that's right. We're sending out mass text text messages. I think that if you enjoyed the original though you should definitely back this game because it looks amazing guys yeah and they put a lot of time and effort and energy into this they took like what two years or something would like this that kill to make the it? original though like where you would want to play the original probably one? probably, yeah, probably. Right? it'll probably kill the I original think so. all right and then last up we have age of civilization age of civilization which is the hardest game to google because you know there's already so many things with the word civilization or age of civilization in right it. and this is by ice makes and where's my notes here? Do, do, do. Sorry. And this is for one to four players, and it's going to last about 30 to 60 minutes. This is a $27 game, guys. Yeah. I freaking love $27 it's games. It's a small box game, okay. too. Like, yeah. it's one of it's those game boxes. should be, like, a tiny epic size box, you know? Like, like, like this. Like this. I'm, and I'm actually like kind of – so <laughs> I was on the fence with this one, but then when I saw that, that it was a small that box. That it was a small box one? And, that it, and the price, I was kind of like, well – 
kind of feel like we should at this point, based just off those two things alone, really made right. me more so interested than I was. I enjoy civilization games. I like the fact that they kind of downsize this into not only a smaller box that I can carry around and throw out on a table quickly, but also that they've reduced the time, the player time on this. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a really, really long right. game. Right, so, because some of the civilization games go so long. And I kind of like it being shorter because then you can play it and then you can like try out a new strategy and just play it again. You, you're not stuck going like, that was the only game right. I got to play tonight. Especially when you have like 47 different civilizations to choose from and you're gonna only going to be playing three each time you play. So yeah, you there's so really much pick. variability and stuff that you can play with there and so much gameplay, like so much challenging gameplay. And I like as, as it moves down, you start to like lose options and stuff. Yeah, so you're you're actually advancing quite literally through the ages with your your game mechanics. And you get to keep like your legacy things that you learned with your last civilization when right. you launch like a new one. So there's a lot of things here that I think are very interesting and I can't wait to play. But there's one thing. Yeah, that's right. There's one thing that came to our attention that I did not even notice at first. Notice at first that somebody went ahead and mentioned in a comment and I was like, oh man, you know what? They're a hundred percent right. I like, it just didn't dawn on me. One of the mandatory, one of the mandatory actions you can take, or I should say one of the mandatory cards you have to play with, which is an action on the action board is enslave. So one of the three that will always be out is enslave. It's part of the, the starting board, if you will. Yes. It's part of the core starting board. And you kind of have to figure out if you're going to support games that make those sort of things or not, you know? Now, and be before we get too in the weeds on this, yes, I do want to mention, so that was something I was like, ooh, that's not cool. Like, I'm not super into that. I understand. We it's don't want to promote enslaving people, you right. know? It's like a huge part of history, but just like there's so many World War II games, in the World War II games, they generally gloss over the fact of the genocide part. Right. Because nobody really wants to play a game where you're committing acts of genocide. Right. And enslaving, although they're not talking about a specific race or anything like that, you know, a specific time period, it's through all of humanity, enslavement has happened. It's not something that you want to, like, kind of glorify. Right. Right? Like, in any right. way, like, how is that part of a fun game? You know, like, it sucks. I know it so happens today. Um, yeah, it's not something that I want to play in my gameplay. It's not something I want to enforce, that enslaving is a good thing that helped build civilization. Right. Even if it is part of our history. There's parts of history that although we should know about them, don't need to be glorified. And I think that's the real fine distinction. Right, exactly. And I think it's just part of that inclusiveness in gaming, although you might not think about it at first or, you know, it's so, like, involved in, like, social aspects that you don't even realize it's happening. But little things like that do matter. And we actually we got to talk to Ice Makes Games about yeah, we talked this to a little today. bit. Yeah, which was kind of nice. And we talked about that particular portion of it with the enslave card and we're like, hey, you might get more backers if you just like change the name of this. Like you could make it into something else because there are people within the community that that is an offensive thing, like very, very offensive, you know? I mean, so there's a lot of people that would just prefer not to. And with it not being one of the cards that you don't have to actually play with, right. it makes it very tough. So in our discussion with them, we said, hey, in order to be more inclusive, here's some different things we can do. And one of them was either swap it out so it's one of the cards that is in the bottom that doesn't necessarily need to be played with so that you can just remove it from your game. The other option, which I think, because they don't want to completely get rid of it, which I understand because somebody made this game. You don't want to, as a manufacturer, just nix somebody's complete idea. So I, I get that. And it is still a big part of history. And some people want to play with that historical accuracy, even if it's horrible. Um, the solution that most likely will happen, so I would, I would almost back it for a dollar just to keep following it, just to, I mean, that's what we're going to do, is to have a double-sided board. So that starting tile board with the, with the mandatory actions or the actions that you have to play with will have one side will have enslavement and the other, other side will have some different verbiage. Same action as far as like mechanic goes, but it might some, be something more like tax taxes instead or farming or, or something along that route so that you can still enjoy the game without having to relive the crappier parts of history. Well, and just being a little bit more sensitive to people that, that might be an offensive thing too, you know, because I mean – people being enslaved was not that long ago. So, right. like, and it does still happen and, in all and over the world. And it just creates inclusiveness in the community, you know? So, like, hey, we understand that this offends you, and, like, we'll change it. So I'm really hoping that they end up changing that portion of it because this game I was 100% sold on. I love it. I love the idea of the small box games, and I love the idea of having a large civilization game in a small box uh, until that was brought up, and I was like, oh, man, like, I can't support that just – 
being who I am, you know? And so because they went ahead and we talked to them and if they do make that change, like I am 100% backing this yeah. game because it looks amazing. It does look like a cool game. Yeah, I really like the fact that that does go down and that you are getting different things uh, actions that you can choose between and some of the actions are just going to go out so like if the particular race that you have there is not going to do well with the future actions like you're going to you're going to make sure that they go and that you have your new race come in that you're going to manage like you're going to make sure and do that right, so i really enjoy that portion of it yeah and it sounds like it'll be very expandable where you could add additional civilizations fairly easily for future expansions and whatnot and i think having a base set of like 47 def different civilizations gives you so much replayability there. Like yeah. that's, that's fantastic. Because you can fantastic. really only focus on three per game, it sounds like. Yeah. So I, I'm going to be, we're going to be watching this particular campaign closely. This is a newer game manu or game publisher. I don't know if they've done anything else. Are it, they first Well, and there's creator? a lot of time left on this too. I mean, there's like 27 days left on this Kickstarter. Yeah. So, wow, I hope they give that option. Then I'll back it. If not, I'm out. Yeah, Ryan. So, like, sometimes it's just, like, those little things. You know, it, until it was brought to my attention, I was like, oh, man, okay, that's a really valid point. I like, I get not, that. Right. Yeah. Not noticing it. Plus, right? another thing to kind of consider, too, is that the way Americans feel about enslavement versus other countries is, is significantly yeah, different. Yeah, some other countries just might not, might, might not know how touchy of a subject that can be for certain it's people. It's like that so. game Mayday Mayday, which is like where you're oh, hijacking right, a plane. Right, We just played that, yeah. It's a great game. It's an excellent game. But I could see why people aren't super excited to buy that game Yeah, in America. because you don't want to be like, hey, we're going to act out being terrorists on a plane. This is going to be amazing. You know, you don't want right. to bring that sort of uh, theme of game to America because of American history and stuff. So, like, you just got to be, like, a little sensitive to the fact that different people believe different things and think different things. Like I think the most important thing, though, is that they heard that from us and from some other people, and they were willing to try to make a good compromise for everybody. Right. Absolutely. How big is the first player token, right? That's what I want to know, Magenta, because I was that looking at this starter? statue starter token right here. It's a full right bust. It's like this. That's why, no, I, that's I, why I paused on this, because I was like, dang, that looks nice. I want that so bad. <laughs> I, I wonder if it even fits in the box, though, right? You I don't know. It's a full bust. you got to carry around with you. I'm down with these Meeple stickers, too. I loved this when they did it in Terror in Meeple City mm -hmm. when it was originally Rampage, the first edition of that whenever yeah, the they launched it yeah it they had different. the meeple stickers and it looked amazing like they they just look so cool with me meeple stickers on them guys like i'm down for that <laughs> yeah so definitely one to watch i would like i said i'm going to back it for a dollar just so that i get alerted for the update just to kind of see if they go along with the feedback they're getting because if they do that now then that's a good sign that that company is going to be willing to listen to the players and what the players want. Absolutely. So, again, I'm 100% on board with this as long as that one little change is made. Like, I'd be super damn. It's better <laughs> It's better be at least 3 millimeter. Heck yeah, and, Ben. Uh, ben, how big three would that be? 3 millimeter cardboard. What kind of girth is 3 millimeters? <laughs> I don't. So, like... I, don't. I only back games with three millimeter cardboard, guys. That's it. <laughs> it won't even fit in its box anymore. Yeah, that's true. But I, I did like the wide variety of different. I mean, there's some of these civilizations that I don't know a lot about, so it might be interesting if I can actually learn something by playing this game. Oh, that's true. That happens on accident. I like they sometimes. have the Polynesian or and stuff like sometimes. that in there. That's really nice. That's fun. Ooh, yeah, and the Mayans and everything. Inca. Gosh, I'm so excited about this game, guys. I really hope that happens because I really want to back this game like real bad. And I like the fact that it's small and portable, and we don't really have a really good civilization game. Yeah, we don't. Off the top and plus, of my head. well, I don't think you like playing things that are that long. I don't really. want to play it right. Like I got, yeah. That's the big thing. Like I found out that, that I'm a real time strategy player, not like a civilization player, because I got civilization yeah. for the computer, and I was just like, and I don't like, like the turns, and there's why? no combat why really, and all that. Why is taking so long? It's just too much. <laughs> I got bored with it, and I stopped playing it. But like, I like you know? real time strategy games like StarCraft and. If All that's those. if that's your style of game, then that's your style of game. And if it's not, it's not like that's. I want my infantry to do something, gamers, not just kind of hang know? out. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today, guys. We really appreciate Except for all you, of ben, your comments. You didn't bring any good <laughs> and everything. Greg should be back with us next week. 
We have agreed with the doctor's point. The U.S. backers might be uniquely sensitive to this because of our ugly history with slavery was tied to a race, whereas in ancient world, the game setting, it wasn't. Very true. Exactly. Right. So and it's like happened all throughout history. But, I mean, lots of things happen all throughout history. I mean, so has, like, all kinds of other ugly warfare things. It doesn't mean I want to relieve it. Like, I personally went to war twice, and so I don't play war games that are solely based off of U.S. world history wars that are current. I'm not going to play battlegrounds or what, whatever like video games are like that because i just don't feel like that's something fun for me to go ahead and play after having been in that situation right and as part of being a female and stuff like that i mean that people still do enslave people you know and there are issues with that so like i mean it can be a sensitive subject not just for american history but things that are going on now too but it's things that other people might not think of because they are not in those environments and there's so, other countries we're not even thinking of that right it could be happening today right so, well, exactly you know, it's, so th it's there's a way to work around it you should probably just well, try and that's kind of the thing it doesn't have like to it's be a there. tiny change like just change like the, the word. word the word of what it is Literally you know the like, word. yeah so like change it to bird <laughs> i heard bird's the word bird is the word but bird 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 is I'm the word i'm sorry she's sorry. like this. she hasn't eaten <laughs> low blood sugar or something she's like this all the time you just you're supposed to join in god why do i even have you as a co-host here because i bring stitch, stitch. that's it you're coming no, with no, me no no stitch is mine with me <laughs> Thanks so much, Alan. Yeah, we try to, well, you know, we try to inform the community on things that are happening whenever it does happen. And, yeah. you know, bring you guys amazing games to back and stuff like that. And what else we got going on? We got the Renaissance Festival tickets if you're in Arizona. And Arizona Game you Fair want next to do weekend. Renaissance Festival. We got tickets Seven to days. give away. Yeah, we got Arizona Game Fair happening next week. Not yeah, next weekend. Seven days. Not this weekend, but next weekend. So we'll be there. Yeah. So if you're in Arizona as That's well, the words I used. can do that. And what else? I don't know. That's yeah. it. That's we good. got we actually if you haven't checked out our newest review that we did on Wingspan, make sure to check that out. We're changing up the format a little bit and stuff and how we're recording it. I'm really excited about it and we hope to do more of those here soon. Yeah, we definitely have some more reviews in the works too. Yeah. She's so making me play all the games and it's horrible. And I'm hoping we'll be finished with the studio next month. Like, we'll see. <laughs> Don't put expectations on that. I'm not a handyman. I'm a doctor. We'll see. Hopefully. Oh, Alan's too far from Arizona. Well, thanks again so much for joining us, guys. Join us again next week for more Kickstarters. And yeah, you can we will have more. Some good ones. Check out Dr. Glory Hog at. Dr. Underscore Glory Hog on Instagram or at Dr. Glory Hog on Twitter or Dr. Glory Hog. You can search me on Facebook same way. And if you liked this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Give us thumbs up. Give us hearts, hearts, everything. Okay. We will see you guys all next week. Thanks so much for watching. Aloha.